Samantha Black, Editor-in-Chief of Science Board, and I'm thrilled to be here today with Leslie Sharp, who is Chief Scientific Officer of Oncomex. Thanks for joining us today, Leslie. It was really excited to be able to talk about Oncomex's uh, oncolytic uh, viral therapy platform and so we got really a lot of uh, you know a, a lot of people visiting the poster it was really nice to see that it was actually the, the one of the most favorite things was to be back in person again and really get to interact with our colleagues one-to-one -one on a spontaneous uh, a spontaneous manner we did get a lot of questions about what's novel about um, myxoma virus as a therapy and we got a lot of interest in um, combining oncolytic viruses with immunomodulatory trans genes and you know and, and how to think about combining that with other immunotherapies that are part of the standard of care. Sure, Oncomix is um, is a preclinical biotechnology company. We use myxoma virus as an oncolytic virotherapy platform. Myxoma virus is a um, pox virus, but it's a member. It's it only it only is pathogenic to rabbits, and so that's an advantage because as a non-human pathogen, as a non-viral vector, it gives us the opportunity to go into patients with no pre-existing immunity. Um, and because it's a large virus, it uh, gives us also the ability to put in a lot of different transgenes. What we're doing with the Oncomix platform is adding in immunomodulatory transgenes so that we can really sustain the anti-tumor immune response. And we think that that's gonna become a really important pillar of cancer care um, in combination with the immune checkpoint inhibitors and other novel biologics that are being used to treat cancer patients. Yeah, absolutely. We've heard a lot at this conference so far about combination therapies, so hopefully you guys have a place to play in that in that area, for sure. What we're really excited about, about using myxoma as a therapy for this, is that we can get multiple modes of immunomodulation into a single therapeutic. And so that allows us to have, uh, to, to take that combination strategy and combine stimulation across the cancer immunity cycle into a single therapeutic. And then that further allows us to combine with some standard of care agents. And so we, we think that that's gonna be transformative for cancer care. We're a small company and we're a preclinical company. So for us, the um, COVID had an impact at the beginning in terms of how do we get our work done and keep our employees safe because we're, you know, we're really in the weeds at the bench. And so when you have to do bench work, it's really important that we um, keep our keep our employees safe as they're doing their work to serve cancer patients. And so for us, that meant really working carefully and having a lot of dialogue with our colleagues about what was what was safe, what they felt comfortable with, and how we could um, how we could get the company's work done and make sure that they felt safe and comfortable in their work. From the practical perspective, we've had to really pay attention to things like consumables, because this is something that's been facing everybody in the field right now. And so we've had to really talk about our experiments on the day-to-day -day level to say, okay, what reagents do we have today and how do we prioritize our experiments to make sure that we can get the things done that are the most important to us in a timely manner. So that's been, that, that's been challenging. <laughs> Yeah, supply chain is uh, definitely a challenge for, for everybody right now, but hopefully we, we're on the tail end of that and we're coming out of it. <laughs> we're keeping our fingers crossed and we're actually seeing that right now that we're better able to get the material that we need in a timely manner. So we're, we're happy that things are, are moving forward. Yeah, I think the challenge is the immune system is really complex. Um, and I, I think the, uh, the other challenge is that everybody's immune system is gonna be different. And that's, I think, one of the things that we've really seen, you know, and, and I think 
is much easier to explain in the COVID era because people understand now one person has a very mild case or doesn't know they have COVID and other people, you know, other people are on the opposite end of the spectrum. And a large part of that we think is due to differential immune responses. So one of the good things that come out is that people understand the immune response better, or at least conceptually understand what that means. I think as scientists, what that means for us is we need to really think about um, how each patient, how each tumor is unique, and how do we broadly apply our therapeutic paradigms in the setting of the uniqueness of the patients that we use. And I think the field is moving in that way. Compared to where we were five years ago or 10 years ago, I think we really do think differently about, um, about individual tumor microenvironments and combination strategies and understanding the complexity of the interplay between the tumor and the immune system. enjoy the immuno-oncology space because it really takes into account multiple aspects, both of the tumor and of the immune response. So I think that really gives us a lot of opportunities to leverage biology on both, on both the tumor side and the immune side. So I think really understanding how those two things work together. I think also looking beyond just T cell modulation into microenvironment modulation, um, looking at how there's interplay between cancer cells and immune cells in terms of, um, you know, of um, uh, molecularly targeted therapeutics and um, and uh, other types of uh, kinase inhibitors, for example, to see how those interplay with each other. I think that the, there was really nice talk today about using CAR T cells for solid tumors. I think that's a big leap that we're looking forward to seeing more information on. And I really think that we're, that immunotherapy is still in the learning phase. And so I think there's going to be quite a lot more um, novel findings and big advances coming out. Now that we have some clinical data from our first generation and second generation immunomodulators, really understanding how to put that together is where we're gonna have big advances. Yeah, so Oncomix Therapeutics, we're, um, as I mentioned before, we're a preclinical company, but we're, we're rapidly advancing our candidates towards the clinic. And so I'm really excited to see what this is going to look like since uh, myxoma virus is a uh, novel virus. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And I'm also excited about extending our platform past this, past our first clinical entry, really um, kind of getting a good understanding of how to leverage this novel platform. Awesome. Thank you, Leslie, for joining us. It's been really great um, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you.